Emily. I don't want to watch. Come on. Anymore. Please bring back the 500 mile an hour storm. I'm so sorry for your rating. I'm gonna bump you up now. What's up, guys? It's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. about shooting today we are going to do a met reacts to a movie called storm chasers revenge revenge of the twister revenge Sto of the twister storm chasers yep. revenge of the twister yep. 1998 yep. right after twister came out in 96 probably seen some of our posts over on instagram we took a shot at this one <laughs> And now, let's preface it real quick. <laughs> yeah, um, so we have watched the first four minutes and seven seconds, and we decided that we just can't watch it without you. Because normally we watch the whole movie, and then we'll pick some clips, and we'll sit here, and we'll react and give our opinion on certain parts. But this one, I, I think we're just going to sit down, and we're going to watch it for the first time with you. Because it was... We um, need support. We need... If it, Support through the pain. <laughs> I guess before we get started, if you're new around here, we are both degreed meteorologists. We do this in our spare time for fun, sit down and watch really bad weather movies and give our opinion on it, so. Now, Twister came out a year and a half, two yes. years before this movie. So I'm like, okay, it, it, it's setting a bar high. This not too long after Twister. So I'm what? hopeful. We saw the first four minutes and I'm like, nobody watch Twister. There is no such movie as Twister. They just came up with stuff. If you're ready, grab your popcorn, your favorite beverage. Let's sit down and watch this together. Wish us luck. <laughs> okay. Okay. Couple different radars here. Good. You better get on the horn. This thing's gonna let foot through. Tell them to upgrade to a category four. This is unit category three. Category four? I storm warning from Greenville and the surrounding counties. What's a category four? There was, Greenville there was only storms. Counties. They're okay. chasing storms, right? We're in the core. How's the map in Greenville? The core of what? Beautiful. Where did the hurricane go? Those are islands. <laughs> is, she, is she driving on an island? What was that? Lightning. Downburst. Downburst? Amy? Yeah? We got major instability. The index is dropping. The ion count is really jumping here. <laughs> <laughs> None of those words made yeah. sense. The lifted yeah. index is dropping? 96? No. So, there were a lot of radar images shown. I think one was of the whole United States, one was of like Florida and the Bahamas, and the other one was a string of islands and a hurricane. None of those images go together, however. He's flying through a hurricane, she's chasing a storm somewhere flat. I, I guess there's somebody that's in the van with her that's kind of doing a radar sweep. Lifted indices. Okay, so yeah, let's, just let's break that, it down right? a little bit non-technical. So lifted indice is a parameter that meteorologists use to determine instability. They use temperatures at the surface and at uh, about 18,000 feet above the surface. They also look at a few other things and basically they come up with a calculation and if it's a number within a certain range it lets you know whether you have instability or whether it's stable. Back in 1996 you did not have real-time lifted indices. You you had balloons that were launched and you took measurements at certain heights above the ground. That data came into the weather service. Every 12 hours they cranked out the equation for various points across the United States and you got your lifted index that you could calculate those things from. Not in a van, not no in instruments, <laughs> not real time lifted indices. Nobody okay. launched a balloon. So there was no balloon launch. How did they get, you know, 18,000 foot temperature readings, temp dew point readings, you, you just, it just, off the jump, it's just wrong. So, it's <laughs> <laughs> going straight to it. Let's just, just call it what it is. Parameter to use for severe weather, yes. Application here, 
completely wrong. Yeah. So that, and then the ion count, I have no idea where that came out of. There's no relevance. It's not relevant. What does the ion count have to do with anything here? An honorable mention is that they're using these to show how unstable the atmosphere is. However, they are flying through a thundercloud. <laughs> if it is unstable, there will be a storm. So by looking at the sky and seeing that there is already a storm, one can deduce that it is already unstable. Uh, we don't need any indices or numbers to tell us that it's unstable. Well, we can look at the cloud. Honorable mention again. The premise of the movie is husband dies in tornado. So then she, meteorologies and Revenge of the Twister is the name. He died because lightning struck his plane and there was a downburst even though there was no wind. So lightning struck the plane and she says, what was that? And he says, a downburst. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so... A downburst is really strong winds going straight towards the ground. His plane wasn't moving. In fact, he got struck by lightning instead right before he said that. And I didn't see any tornadoes in the first minute and 45 seconds that we just watched. I think they're just trying to come up with something to have the plane go down. Maybe it was because of all those excessive ions. I'm sure we'll find out. Let's continue. Winds are up to 40 from the west. There's... Oh, come on. Please try, guys. <laughs> this is this is where Dad lost it when we first started watching it. They're in the middle of a rainstorm. All their computer equipment's out. able to see anything on the screen. Half of them aren't even plugged in. <laughs> These figures can't be right. Oh yeah, they're right. I had the data double checked and confirmed with the weather service. Must be right then. There was definitely a low precipitation supercell. But here's what's really strange. There wasn't any rain. What? Hang <laughs> on. Wait. What? Wait a second. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait a second. Hang on. <laughs> Kayla, I'm sorry to tell you. There was a low precipitation supercell. Mm -hmm. And here's the shocking thing. There was no precipitation. <gasps> <laughs> How can this be? The numbers must be incorrect. Can you give us the definition of a low precipitation supercell? A supercell that has a low amount of precipitation. <laughs> However, there is precipitation. It's just a low amount. It's just a small amount. You have high precipitation supercells, which is basically like if there's a tornado, you ain't gonna see it coming because it's all white out rain. Low precipitation supercells are the kind that you see in those pretty pictures out in the Midwest of Oklahoma and there's like a beautiful storm and a tornado clear as day. You can see everything around it. There's just a little bit of rain in the background. That's a low precipitation supercell. However, supercells do rain. Your options are low precipitation or high precipitation. There is no no precipitation supercell. We need to get somebody out there. What are they gonna do? They're gonna look for Maybe traces of no rain? Already. They're housing <laughs> hundreds in hotels and shelters. Satellite shows more unstable weather arriving too. The satellite shows Plus, more unstable Jane. weather. Think you can handle it? No, it goes wrong. Let's what? try it again. Oh, she's much better. It's a script. It's, it's a movie. A movie set. What okay. is happening here? So, not only is real Hollywood wrong, fictional Hollywood in this movie is also wrong. So I'm counting this as two strikes against. Radar? There's radar here? <laughs> if you just drove in a straight line. Have you got a death wish or something? Radar up here makes no logical sense, okay? Can we go check that out, please? Radar doesn't make sense out in a remote area. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, so you see that white domed image, right? Let's first take a look at this, the location of this radar. So if you look back behind the radar, you see a hill, you see trees that are taller than it, you got trees all around. When you have a Doppler radar, you want to put it at the highest point, especially if you're in mountainous areas, because 
the radar can't see through the ground. This radar is sitting kind of in the middle of this lower Valley? elevation. It's not going to see anything unless the storm is right there. And even then, you know, it, it can only tilt up so much to see the structure of the storm. Most Doppler radars are on a tower. They're elevated so that they can get up above buildings. They can get up or above trees. How did she see that from the road? <laughs> That's another good question. Let's continue. Damage to homes indicates wind speeds of about 200 miles an hour, maybe more. Ground swirls that I observed indicates right. a single F vortex scale. with rapid mm -hmm. vertical motion. It's been a couple of days since the tornado. 200 mile an hour winds. That These little trees yeah, no. wouldn't be here. No. Oh, so it's been a couple of days. Why is everyone still standing around this broken, dilapidated Listen, mess of uh, houses? I apologize if I was a little short with you earlier. There's a tree right here. Questions? Yeah, there's these little saplings. <laughs> any of this All this would be gone. Hey, uh, call me crazy, but isn't it a bad idea to be standing in a wide open space during a lightning storm? He is right. Heat lightning, giving you the willies. Heat lightning! Heat lightning! They said the words! Heat lightning! Ah! So heat lightning is what people call lightning that is too far away to hear the thunder it is not caused by heat that makes no sense that means it would just be lightning on the beach all the time because it's hot doesn't make any sense it's just lightning as a meteorologist you should know this however oh, you can hear the thunder in this clip it doesn't make any sense even if you want to say that heat lightning is lightning caused by heat it's in the middle of the night they're wearing a coat <laughs> there's no heat there's no heat you can hear the thunder you see storm clouds Baby, what's up? what the heck what all I need I've waited my whole all life to see lightning. this yeah. correct me if I'm wrong we do know that ball lightning is a thing. It normally does not shoot out of the sky at people! <laughs> Correct? He's gone. That's... <laughs> ball lightning generally is just, you know, it's... The, a discharge and it has kind of like a, a, a form. A lot of people will see it uh, here at the surface, you know, when you get a lightning strike and, and the energy, you get this ball of lightning that kind of propagates a, more like in a horizontal direction. It usually just kind it doesn't, of floats along yeah. ethereal looking. I've never heard of ball lightning in the concept of what they're trying to show here. It's more of a light phenomenon than it is a lightning strike. It's kind of like a, after a strike. Yeah, it's accompanied it's by afterwards. lightning and it, yeah. Let's go a little I'd, bit further. Let's, That a rocket? I'm just gonna go stand over here and hold it. What are you doing? I'm gonna fire this rocket up in the air with a copper line attached. Hopefully, it'll draw an ion charge. You gonna pull down a lightning bolt? Mm-hmm. Yeah! Yeah! Wait a minute. Watch yourself, Sammy. This is where she really goes nuts. She made lightning. She made lightning. Okay, well, your turn. Do I have to? Yes, go on, hurry. Why? Why is she making everybody do this? Everybody gets a turn to get struck by lightning. What? What did that prove? No, you don't understand. That never happens. This guy is like a huge electrical game board. Now there's lightning. I knew it. The residue on the leaves is nitrogen oxide. Obviously something we shouldn't be finding here, right? No. It kept the burning liquid hydrogen at high temperatures. Liquid hydrogen? Rocket fuel. It must be coming from the testing of pine feather. Burning rocket fuel? As a meteorologist, how would you have the equipment to test what's on? School, the 
sciences and got Pine needles and stuff. <laughs> okay, you clear cut all the trees, you mix rocket fuel, electrical fields. It's rocket fuel. That's it, this is ground zero. For what? That's what's creating the instability. It then creates the updraft which spawns a tornado. How can I prove that? Everyone's think I'm nuts. Yes! Burning rocket fuel. Messing with the electromagnetic field. Made an updraft of wind going upwards that spawned a tornado. Did I get all that? I think so. I wasn't believing Burning what I was hearing. Jet fuel. Shouldn't, with that logic, any plane that's burning jet fuel? in an electrically charged area produce a tornado? But what's causing the electrical field? Where's your grid to cause the electrical field? She hasn't tested for an electrical field. All she's done is got lightning from the sky. But the clouds are, the, the, the purpose is to, when that static electrical charge builds up, they discharge it as lightning. Well, why aren't the clouds already doing this? Like what is making the clouds hold on to all of this? Yeah. Electrical charge, uh, like the, the, that's the purpose of lightning, is to discharge it and stabilize the atmosphere again. Otherwise, it would just blow up. <laughs> you can have the sky blow up. The math ain't adding up. Mm, Not yet. No. Imagine this is a thunderstorm. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna shake it up. See how the funnel's forming? Ah. There's this theory that if you have a prevailing wind and it hits a strong crosswinds or an object, it can turn it back in on itself. Now, I think that with the deforestation of the area along with the power lines and the chemicals, well, it somehow created the perfect environment for this to happen. Hmm. Environmental influence. Okay. I I think I may be seeing where they're going. Okay. The jet fuel may be heat source. Okay. Deforestation, the wind is able to flow through and with power lines and other parts of the forest left open, forcing the air to have a current and then the electrified part, I don't know where that plays in yet, but is that where they're going? You said if you have a prevailing wind and then it hits a crosswind, it turns in on itself? <laughs> that beer's gonna taste nasty now. <laughs> they're creating instability. Airborne activants from the launch pad along with the landscape changes and the electrical fields is fueling a tornado. Look! Then why hasn't there been more than one tornado in nine months? Well, there could be one within the next few hours when the next storm hits. You know, she does have her moments, but but she's calculated all this stuff. The, the, the mezzanines and the winds and the... Mezzanines? <laughs> Who are you? Oh, Will Stanton, sir. You know, if I were you guys, uh, I'd believe because of these huge power grid things and, and the winds coming in laterally and coming up and rising with the rocket. He had the better explanation. <laughs> he tried so hard. Can't believe we stole one of their fans. <laughs> <laughs> the boss is coming after us? Sure, I hope so. Let's go. There we go. Oh, there we go. That was some good oh, footage there. Oh, this storm's a monster. Right, ours? That's a... Just gathering storm. Is that a hurricane satellite? See where we are here. I can't tell what it is. Oh, 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 oh! What? Oh. Is it? Oh, oh wait a minute! Shooting top. <laughs> wait a minute! It was what? sinking in. Oh my gosh! It looked like day after tomorrow uh, when the oh. air was sinking down in that low pressure. <laughs> What? And she says overshooting top. But no, it just means that it's just the cloud goes a little bit above the top. It's ah, what is happening? An over okay, an overshooting top uh, is when you have an updraft from a thunderstorm because of the momentum of that updraft, it continues to go further up 
then where the clouds and, and the airflow is kind of leveling out up at the higher elevation. So what happens is, is you're going to have some clouds that are a little bit higher because you know it's still coming up in that updraft. And that's what we call an overshooting top. A lot of severe thunderstorms do have overshooting tops. It shows that there's a strong updraft. Strong updraft, that's all it means. But then the image they showed, it actually showed like the a low pressure. Uh, with this like sinking air, which would be high pressure. Which is the opposite of the low pressure, which has the rising air and the updraft. What else could <laughs> happen? Let's rationalize this. It's the last 15 minutes of the movie. You know how this goes. We must Let's watch. find out. Pull over, now. Why doesn't he ever listen when she says to pull over? In the back. She could be like, you're driving into a tornado. And he'd be like, no, I'm not. What is happening? Why are they strapping in? What is going on? Where's the wind coming from? It's an updraft, not a downburst. It's not even moving. They're rocking the... What happened? What? At least it's not a no precipitation super though. <laughs> what are we... What just happened? <laughs> what? It just rained on me. <laughs> I do buckle in tight when it's about to rain. Never been through anything like that before. What just happened? My world. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? Welcome to my world. I'm a weather genius and we just strapped in for rain. Aren't you impressed? Stupid! Daytime! Windy, stormy. Storm cloud. Those were definitely secured into the concrete not one hour ago. <laughs> Why are people grabbing blankets and stuff? Why is everyone's solution to everything is wrap a blanket around them? Oh, that's a clear day. I think I need a blanket wrapped around me watching this movie. Excuse me, I've got to go find a tornado before it finds us. Ready for some action? Hold on, hold on, wait. If it finds you, then you don't have to go find it. This is a liability. Identifying the sensitive smear storm research for anything that might happen to you out there. The lawyer! <laughs> well, this is a twist. Volunteer that wants to go with you. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty. pretty. That's a supercell. Tail cloud, back to your Danville. I knew it would start here. Supercell? Very good. And boom. hopefully it'll spawn him as a cyclone. Yes, good job. It's a it's a supercell. Well done, buddy who just signed a waiver. Hopefully there's not a mesocyclone, which is the it's what you need to have in a thunderstorm to call it a supercell. Oh, what good. do you mean? We did it again. Oh, great. We have a supercell. Hopefully it doesn't form a mesocyclone. It already has. That's why it's a supercell. You should know this. You done yet? Keep going. Look, it's heading east. No, northeast. It's not bad for a rookie, though. Come on, it's all ours now. Looks like it's heading east. No, it's heading northeast. Are you both looking at the same storm? Anvil at the rear that we're following. It looks like the worst will swing past LaPorte, but uh, it might hit near Wellington and maybe back towards Boston. Why do they care about the anvil? It's not where the tornado will form. It's where lightning would be. Yeah. I thought they were parked. I want to lift the index right away. You want to lift the index right away? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Their Webster <laughs> dictionary. I want an image of 
lava supercell over the Great Plains. <coughs> Surely there's a huge tornado. I don't know. What's what's similar to 1998, 1990? Gerald 97? Anybody have footage of that that we can use? No! Hurricane in Puerto Rico! That'll do! Lift the stamp, send it! <laughs> the people will love it! <laughs> Keep it playing! We got eight more minutes of this nonsense! Subscribe, bye bye. <laughs> Please bring back the 500 mile an hour storm. I'm so sorry for your rating. I'm gonna bump you up now. If you like what you saw today, I didn't like what I saw today. There was uh -oh. so much, I forgot the rest of it. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Let's just keep going. None of it was right. <laughs> Lifted index is minus 10. There's a good chance we'll get to see a mesa cyclone today. <laughs> With a lifted index of minus 10? I would hope so. All right, there was a radar that didn't mean We're anything. not gonna look at it. Oh, heat lightning again. Yep. Hey, that's it. That's what? Frank Jim always theorized a situation like this could create multiple tornadoes. But everybody laughed at it because they said it wasn't found in nature. But it is here because of the operation of pine feather. We could have two or three simultaneous tornadoes. Which is not okay. unheard of. We've got a hook echo. Strong inflow on the rear flank. There's gotta be a tornado just somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the hot dog in the sky. <laughs> Hang on. They're using some real imagery. They said some right things, but they just no. <laughs> I'm seeing everything yada yada words that kind of make sense. There has to be a tornado. He's looking out the windshield. <laughs> How did he not see this in front of the car? Remember, he's FEMA, so he has no weather background. He probably doesn't even know what he's looking at. Bet you've never had this in your neck of the woods before. <laughs> Buckle up. It's gonna rain. She's not wearing a seatbelt! <laughs> What's that? Is that a big one? F4, F5. Oh, I scaled that. How can you tell? It's a damage scale! F4, F5, it didn't touch anything yet. How it can you tell? Even... Was that Gerald? What is this? <laughs> the, it's a damage scale! You can't read a tornado without seeing the damage! That is the purpose of the scale! It's not a wind speed scale! It's not even the right. It, they keep changing it. It's like changing six it. different tornadoes. Fuck you. Look there. Oh, Mamatis clouds coming on. Do that? It's called a multiple vortex, and it can be whatever. That is wants. not a multiple vortex. Those are. Oh, great. Like, we don't have enough problems. What What's going on with all this? What is happening here? Let's spit in the camera. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it just did a cut and paste. <laughs> that is not a multi vortex tornado. We'll leave it at that. Before we've got a problem, we've got six. I repeat, six touchdowns. That's. They have no way out. The speed of those things will cut off all the rubs. What was that? It looked like an ocean wave. <laughs> Why did that do it? I'm doing the best I can, Frank. It came down. There was nothing going up. <laughs> that was real. That's a hurricane. That's a, that's a hurricane. That's definitely a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. All right. Buckle up. That is. That's real. Not Colorado. That wasn't. That's real. That that's light not... wasn't. <clears throat> what? What? Buckle up. Yes. You gotta really go, buddy. You gotta blaze, buddy. Okay. He's never done Stop. What? What are you doing? Securing the van. Hopefully, it'll hold long enough for Frank to get some footage. What? 
Oh, now it's a tooth? What's happening here? Uh, they're leaving the van. He's not wearing a hat. We're gonna miss that important. It what? always happens. The hat always falls off. There's no hat. They're climbing the outside of the overpass? Uh, what is... Well, okay. Don't do what? this. What? That's not how tornadoes work. No! Where are you going? The camera would have been the first thing to go. So the train is going 700 miles an hour, right? They can't outrun it, but it's parked over their van? They had a personal vendetta against the color yellow. It's over! It's now. over! Ah, here it comes! You know this is gonna be in the cliches. That's... What I... And then it just keeps going! Ah... Uh, now we know why they make you sign those release forms. So, that was Revenge of the Twister. Um, what it was taking revenge for, I have no idea, because Lightning killed her husband, so... Maybe it should be Revenge of the Lightning. Going back to the part about an eye and a tornado. Now, there are possibilities for very large one to two plus mile wide tornadoes where there could possibly be an eye-like feature. This was not that. <laughs> not even close. So. Everything else previously stated, we uphold. It wasn't, yep, nope. Uh, you wanna accuracy rate this? Storm chasing is very dangerous. They need to know what they're doing out there. People die doing it, even the experts. So we're looking at meteorological accuracy and we're looking at entertainment value. So in terms of meteorological accuracy, on a scale of one to 10, and I use one loosely because we have a number of them that have fallen below one. If you notice there's a very large grouping <laughs> between the numbers zero and minus 11. <laughs> yeah, let's get into <laughs> meteorological accuracy, shall um, we? So. It's minus eight for me. <laughs> it's, it might be, is it worse than Super Cyclone? So it, they it had works. some right terms thrown out here and there, but not used the right way. And then there were some other things that just was downright, no, no, no. I think all of <clears throat> Super Cyclone was terrible, so it writes a little bit better. It, it, I would probably put it about a negative six. Negative six? It was... Negative eight? Mm, negative seven. <laughs> they could have done a lot better with this one. All and right. they couldn't have done much worse. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of entertainment value, on a scale from one to ten... Let me list some activities that I think I would rather do than rewatch this movie. Um, watch paint dry. Watch bok choy grow. <laughs> Not as bad as a root canal. But not far from it. <laughs> far from it. <laughs> um, I just mean, since you guys watched the movie with us, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments <laughs> below. Um, if you've seen this movie before and you watched our reaction to it, 
thanks because that's like the highest form of praise I think that our channel could get <laughs> for you to suffer through this movie twice. I, where, where, where do we go from here? Thank you for your suggestions. We really appreciate you giving us these. Are some we? of them we know. <laughs> some of them we know are more meant uh, and, and fun, you know, that, that there isn't a lot of meteorological accuracy, so you want to give those to us, and we appreciate those. We did go into Keep this. them coming. Yeah, knowing that. So. Keep them coming. We do have a few more. We do. Oh, well, we do have a long list, but we do have a few more that are kind of on the horizon, no pun intended, um, that we're going to get to <laughs> in the next couple of months. We try to do one a month, because, uh, we, you know, we got other subjects and case studies and other things we want to get get accomplished, but keep the suggestions coming. So there you have it. Two meteorologists react to Revenge of the Twister. I want to take revenge on this Twister. <laughs> <laughs> on the movie. <laughs> on the movie. Revenge of the Twister. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys like what you saw, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below so you never miss the next one. Check us out on social media, Facebook and Instagram, where you will see us suffering in real time. Uh, when we watch these, if you didn't see on our Instagram story a couple days ago, when dad was originally reacting to the first four minutes of this movie i highly recommend it and as always down in the description box you will find a link to our school of weather if you want to learn how meteorology is actually supposed to be we teach some online courses goes over the basics of meteorology gets into some severe weather things i promise that there's no lifted indices randomly dropping out of the sky and i also am sorry to inform you that you will not learn um, about ball lightning that shoots out of a cannon from the clouds. But if you want to learn the real things about meteorology, check out our School of Weather. We put a lot of time and effort into it, and we're really proud of it. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Uh, just a thumbnail of us looking terrified for our lives and sorely disappointed in Hollywood, and I think we'll be good to go. All right.